Geometry for high school, reviewing high school geometry. Everybody learned geometry in elementary school and middle school, but they learn high school. And when they learn high school geometry, it's learned as a one branch of math. It's established as a math. Uh, it's not like, oh, um, triangle shape like that, circle shape like that. It's not just uh, depending on the visual perceptions. The There will be a very rigid proof method based on the bunch of assumption to establish the one theory okay that's the difference between high school uh, geometry and all the geometry student learn so far okay so in order to establish math there is a uh, some uh, postulate and axiom the postulate and uh, postulate that means, well, maybe physicists can prove they are right, but we kind of postulate they are correct, okay? And the axiom is something like, this is obviously correct. If this is not correct, we have a lot of problem, kind of things. So it's kind of start sneakily with those stuff, but those are the foundation of starting one entire uh, logic with this five postulate and axioms established for the geometry and one of them is called Euclidean geometry and what Euclidean geometry is depend on the postulate you can make this is one of geometry you can establish different geometry and Physicists may say, actually, this word is something like a second geometry, okay? The another one could be the, the real world. The one we learn is Euclidean, Euclidean geometry, and second one, third one exist. It's slightly different. The one is... Uh, well, the, there's no official name, so-called concave and convex. Third one is convex. And the one is flat, which is Euclidean. Okay. Now, uh, physics people confirm that if you don't go too far extreme, like the size of the geometry, it's pretty well matched with observation in physics, which is a Euclidean geometry. And that's what we see. The human can see only so far. Human cannot see like, you know, 10 million light years away. And if you study cosmology, they may start saying, well, you know, actually this universe is like second geometry or third geometry. That's what we have to use. Okay. But if you look at only the humans activity and the physics daily physics on earth and probably in a solar system euclidean, euclidean geometry is pretty much what we observe so physics people confirm this is correct okay it may not be correct at the extreme scale but we can rely on this assumption the one Oh, by the way, this uh, high school geometry is one year course, which we make a crash course to review entire geometry in single video. So it's go really fast. So you have to uh, understand that you stop the video sometimes and digest what it means and, you know, do some exercise on the way so you can finish up the entire geometry. The first one is to draw a straight line from any point to any point. Okay, you can draw a straight line. What is straight line? Okay, you can draw a straight line from any point to any point.
okay, if this world, you can never draw the straight line. You draw every time it's curved. Then it's not the Euclidean, Euclidean geometry. For example, if you are living on the surface of the sphere, you think you draw the straight line, but actually from 3D viewpoint of view, it's not going to be straight because you are going on the surface of a sphere. It's curved, right? So to draw a straight line from any point to any point, to produce a finite straight line continuously in a straight line, the finite straight line continuously in a straight line. So you can extend this straight at any length you want. And third is to describe a circle with any center and a distance. Circle is you can describe with the center and the distance, right? So actually the circle definition you learned in the middle school is the collection of point which has an equal distance r from the center point, right? And that's all right angles are equal to another. All right angles are equal to another. So when you draw the right angle, then other side is also right angle. And that's something to do with what is the sum of internal angle of tran uh, triangle, right? That if a straight line going through two straight line, a straight line going through two straight line, and interior angle on the same side are less than two. So if a straight line going through two straight lines, right? Interior angle on the, on the same side, this and this are less than two right angle combined and two straight line if produced indefinitely will cross path okay so this means the if it's not parallel then some of this will be less than 180 that means 180 degree is a condition to be for two line to be parallel okay so number five is called parallel postulate so here's the explanation if you're not parallel angle a plus b is going to be less than 180 and it's going to meet somewhere okay so another geometry which we talk about the even less than 180 it may never meet okay so there is a difference the postulate difference make the entire uh, math theory different if one of the postulate is wrong, what will happen to geometry? Well, what's happened is geometry theory itself, its entire theory has to be revised if different postulate produce a different geometry theory okay besides axiom the following notions are assumed okay here's a, a lot of uh, vague uh, word axiom and the notions there are many things well this what we assume it's correct already in the geometry in middle middle schools and elementary school okay so beside this uh, axiom and uh, postulate we have another one called notion and notions is like 
the first established actually theorem without a proof you don't have to prove you don't have to prove those this is correct one is a transitive property of equality okay so what is a transitive property of equality say a and b um congruent and b and c are congruent then a and c is a congruent this is like you know obvious right so we call that notion and if somebody object a is congruent to b b is congruent to c how do you know a is congruent to c then say that's a notion we use in the geometry is the it's a theorem already a theorem means it's a proven statement without proof uh, next one is a reflexive property things that coincide with one another equals one another okay so let's look at that. using triangle above if a is b then b is a that means if a is congruent to b you can say b is also congruent to a it's very you know common sense right but that's a notion equality property if equals are added to equal then the whole are equal okay so explain equality property using an example right the if a equals b means a and b is a congruent one a plus c a plus c is b plus c you add a and b uh, c to the a it's going to be same as b plus c the even you subtract you add it and make a par parallelogram we added a new triangle c to make a parallelogram so this is going to be parallelogram right so this parallelogram are identical because you add the 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 same thing to the congruent things so that's what it's mean equality and this is we use in the uh, algebra already right suppose you have 3x equals 34 minus 2x then what we do is we add 2x on the both side then become 5x is 34 so we know x is 34 over 5 right so that's the way we solve algebra equation we're using this all the time so that's an equality property and it's a notion you know if somebody objected then the the person need to uh, develop the entire different theory based on uh, this is not true okay so we're doing a math geometry based on that these are fact fact established from axiom and the postulate um, so axiom we call notion let's go back a little um, so these are the postulate and we accept as axiom the so postulate is axiom and plus we have a notion right
and this one a uh, little strange the axiom and the postulate so, uh, these are the one we accepted prove the following for parallel line and transversal line shown here d plus f so you have a line parallel line and d is this one f D plus F is 180. So this is a fifth postulate, right? If parallel, it should be 180. If less than 180, the line meets somewhere when you extend. So it's not parallel line. So you can prove A equal D or B equal C or C equal H or G equal F. So you can once this is established, then you can tell the relationship of the uh, angle among those, right? And we learned that in the uh, middle school geometry, prove alternative inter uh, interior angles are uh, equals for parallel line above. So the other side also, after you establish this from here you can easily establish this okay it's kind of doing very simple stuff but we try to be very regular rigorous about the uh, mass proof mass theory what we claim is based on the first postulate and the notion okay prove a plus c plus a plus b plus c is 180 now this is called triangles internal sum is 180 okay so what we do is we draw the parallel line here okay so we know this plus this is 180 right okay and this angle is same as this angle so this angle is same as this one so internal sum of internal angle is 180 this is degree okay now would it be possible to prove uh fifth postulate when we say internal triangle sum of internal triangle is 180 yes if this 180 we can prove back the fifth no fifth no uh, fifth post postulate then what's the point of making a fifth postulate we can just replace fifth postulate with this uh, triangle stuff well either way logically can be done but this fifth postulate above we learn is much more uh, self-evident than the claim in sum of internal angle is 180 okay but logically it's the same thing it just sounds better that's why it's ad adapted as a fifth postulate instead of this one but this has an equivalent claim okay isosceles triangle the isosceles triangle A B angle A and B is equal if A B and A C is are equal. Can you prove that? Well again you make a parallel line right and parallel line here you get the parallelogram. In this parallelogram okay uh, since this is a B this is same so we can uh, prove this is the two triangles are congruent triangle a B C and a DC 
congruent we draw we we show this way congruent triangle so we just prove that these lengths are equal okay prove AV and AC AV and AC when A equals B so we just did it this way we can do different way we take a, a perpendicular line then this is 90 this guy is 90 okay then we have a congruent triangle again so that means this and this length are same okay so why do we need the previous two proof in the independently use the example to explain okay if a then b does not guarantee that if b then a is also correct if x is 3 then x is integer is correct but the statement x is integer okay so let's see here we have to prove the opposite the if angle is same then lengths are same if lengths are same then angle are same so we prove this the opposite claim right and if a is B then X is Y and if Y X is Y then A is B this is two different claim right this opposite claim opposite is not always equal if this is correct will this be correct no so we prove both sides when both sides of angle correct isosceles triangles AB and AC lengths are same if lengths are same then angle AB is the same okay so Euclidean geometry so the here's a story the geometry was created not so rigorously before and mathematician called Gauss one time doubted see if all the geometries uh, claim is correct or not and he boiled down to the this postulate those are the postulate used to prove entire geometry math theory this postulate he examined one by one and one of them particular one is a fifth postulate is it correct but in order to prove this you need infinitely long lines see if they meet somewhere and this is hard to do but theoretically equivalent is as I said internal angle is 180 degree for triangle so Gauss tried to verify if this is correct if he verified this then he can say this world postulate are all correct according to the world he live in so he lives in this world he wanted to see so what he did is he took three mountain and use light and telescope and try to measure this angle the such a large scale to him it was a large scale right he came down to 180 very close and beyond that is error he cannot tell whether it could be 108.001 or 180 uh, 179.999 
so on so he couldn't tell okay but he got the correct idea these are the postulate and entire geometry theory is based on the postulate then postulate has to be examined physically see the world is following this postulate and that he tried and he couldn't find it so several hundred years later now astronomy uh, Einstein start discussing see if it's a much larger scale if really triangle internal sum of internal angle in a triangle is 180 or not and the theory came out well it's actually smaller but later that denied and you know they say actually it's larger but later again denied and came back to 180 again so the that's a kind of uh, history of the physics they are going back and forth between 180 smaller or larger and 180 exact so still debate is going on right now the stronger side is 180 smaller um, no actually larger larger than 180 right but it's a, it's extreme scale the anything you do around you like engineering problem or any science project whatever 180 seem to be very good approximation of the real world okay now we have to define area and the volume properly okay area is defined as unit length whatever this inch or centimeters doesn't matter times one square that area is one okay and the volume is one 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 is going to be one whatever the, the unit is if centimeter is called centimeter square if centimeter centimeter cubes okay so this is the definition of area and the volume okay so we have to define many things other definitions and the notion the Euclidean geometry is not self-sufficient in dealing with geomet geometry problem for example the contacting point between curve and the line okay now the we had six portrait is that enough to deal with all the geometry problem actually it's not because when it's come to the curve there are a lot of new problem arises so the Ukrainian geometry need a more postulate to deal with those curves for example what do you mean by contacting line contacting one curve it could be contacting two point or a single point or not contacting at all right so we have to define what the contacting means between curve and line and when a line contacting a circle we know there is only one line that exists to contact a point okay is that true how about can we have another line contacting at the same point okay that need to be handled but that will be solved by saying when the line is contacting the circle the angle is 90 degree the any line less than or larger than 90 degree is not actually contacting with a single same location so it's it's proved 
only one line can contact the circle. Okay? If there's another line contacting, contacting point is different point. There's no two lines contacting at the same point. So this comes with a sym symmetry. The, we have to add the notion of symmetry. So symmetry is uh, just a human perception, right? Is that perception really correct? Maybe it's not. If you uh, have a high fever, dreaming, or under drug influence, you may disagree, right? But the symmetricity is another notion to be added. So don't think the initial postulate listed up is everything we need for the geometry. And another important point is proof of theory. So what happened is the there is an equivalent uh, theorem, parallel line axiom, triangle, a triangle theorem uh, axiom can lead to the parallel, and like that. What we can do is we have axiom, axiom, which is a postulate, and we create a theorem. Theorem is we prove with a set of axiom something about geometry, and we prove using those theorem, we prove and create more theorem, right? And another theorem combined together with prove. Right? So that's how it works. Now, what we have to be careful about is we can say prove 12 from theorem 10, and we can prove theorem 10 from theorem 15, but we can prove we can prove theorem 15 from theorem 12. So here the situation is we didn't prove anything because it's called circle of theorem. So it's not based on axiom. Any theorem that you can trace back to ax axiom or postulate are valid. But those theorem cannot be traced back here. Instead, it trace back and come back to self claim. So this is actually not proving anything. And sometimes this kind of situation happened in the geometry. Okay. Non Euclidean geometry. The physicist talking about non-Euclidean geometry, they suspect the universe may not be not may not be Euclidean. What is issue in the real world is a parallel postulate five. Okay? The universe is bent. The sum of angle for the large triangle may not be one eighty. Is convex or concave? Depend. Is there any better way to measure the skew in the universe? So that is going on non Euclidean geometry, like as a, the one on the sphere is going to be larger than 180 because you can be 90 degree here and 90 degree here and have some angle here for triangle. If it's concave, it's going to be less than 180. So non Euclidean geometry flat space or it's not flat, it's concave or uh, convex. It makes difference. Okay, so that's enough for the rigorous mathematical theory. The high school geometry use this rigorous uh, method 
to prove everything. Now, I I don't know why it suddenly jumped into this law of sign. We did that in the uh, middle school. You try to prove this. The answer is here. And in this video, it's a video is getting too long, so I'm gonna skip it. You can stop the video and uh, try to prove it on a piece of paper. Conic section. Conic section is when you have a cone, inverted cone like that, the cross section become sometimes circle, ellipse. Um, this also we we explain this in the uh, oh, algebra two analytical geometry. Okay, probably you look at that uh, algebra two analytical geometry application of conic function. The orbit and planet within ellipse any lights or wave that start at one focus will reach to the other focus. This is interesting. Parabolic antenna is used to collect a radio wave. Why? Hyperbola involves around its axis forms a surface called surface called hyperb hyperboloid. Okay. So this is in the plenty of algebra two. The law of cosine. This one proves here. You stop the video, try to prove it. It's, I think you have enough uh, volume of ellipse. Okay, and the and the sphere volume of cone. Okay, so Heron's formula. We talk about this in the. Uh, Geometry in the middle sc school and the proof is here and the example. Okay, so that's about it. There are many, many theorems in geometry, and what you do is you take the uh, challenge proof book and try to prove everything in there. And that's what the entire one year of high school is about. Okay? I hope you enjoyed listening to this video. And I will see you in the next video.